um, brand new 410A install video. I'm actually uh, had a few subscribers and uh, some folks wanting to actually see a lot more of the install. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that for you here now. So uh, light, yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna get to that now. So after you cut your unit out, you cut your power out. 24 volt call and your main power to your power box now I'm getting ready to install the new unit you need one of these this is a filter dryer this gets rid of any moisture in the line sets if there is any um, today's not really a real humid day so I mean it's humid it's Alabama but um, yeah it's not real bad so basically I have what I've done is sanded my uh, copper pipe down, my high side down. You want the arrow always going towards the house. So arrow towards the house, that's your flow. Hot gas in, cold liquid out. Uh, you want to go ahead and sand down your uh, your low side line here. So get it ready, prepped, ready to be brazed in. You're going to want to take your You want to take your cutters, cut this in half, and go ahead and braze this in here. And I will be back with more here in just a second. Okay, so we're going to want to cut this out. I'm going to try and keep this all in view for you people. So we'll do a couple rounds. You want to cut it pretty much in the middle of where you sanded it down, obviously. You want to sand everything down real good so the uh, silver solder, silver braze, will uh, adhere. You don't have any freak leaks and whatnot because I've been doing this a long time and I've most definitely had odd leaks come up months and even years after I've done the install. You want to go ahead and sand down both the edges on the filter dryer. And you also, what a lot of people don't know is, you want to sand that down right there, the, the end. You want to, because I mean, that's pretty much what you're brazing to. The braze isn't actually going inside. So I'll show you what I mean. So once again, arrow towards the house. So we'll take this, we'll bend this a little bit, and we will put this in there. And we'll just rest that right there. You want to get your handy dandy oxyacetylene torch. I gotta turn mine on. get a nice stick of silver solder little tip here sorry that's that's an air conditioner my bad that's what we're gonna have to deal with sorry if the sounds bad um, a little tip with brazing things um, I've been doing this a long time you need a if you're just starting out you need to put your rag um, I'm going to move the camera down and over a little bit move some leaves and sticks and shit out of the way um, you want to put a rag on this you don't want this to get too hot but I pretty much learned that I can stay off of it but when you are brazing in back into the unit that's going to be right here um, you do want to put a wet um, rag basically any any t-shirt rag whatever it, it'll work you just want to put that on the actual pieces that you're brazing to you don't want to melt anything and I mean you, you are using oxygen and acetylene which is extremely extremely hot so 
gonna do a little brazing for you guys. Um, you need to worry about what's up under what you're brazing. I just have some sticks and mud and stuff, so it'll be okay. You want the flame to look like that. I don't know if you can hear the hiss, but you want it hissing just a little bit, not too much. You want to keep your flame away from the filter dryer. So you want to kind of braze away. You always want to keep your, your, your torch moving. Yeah, see the paint on there? You always want to keep your torch moving so you don't burn a hole in the actual line set or the, the tip of the filter dryer. Um, basically, you're going to see it get red hot. And then, oh, fire, 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 fire. You're going to see it get red hot. And then you can start dipping your silver solder on there. Basically, you just want to kind of dab it on there and then work it around. You can work it around with the flame, but you need a solid seal on both sides. So you want to go back up under here like I'm doing now and make sure that you're solid on both sides. You're going to need a mirror for this as well. But I'm pretty sure I'm good. Cut your torches off. I do need a rag. So you are going to need a rag. You want to cool this off. Obviously, it's going to be extremely hot. And you will burn yourself. I have done it so many times, it's it's ridiculous. And your, your filter dryer is extremely hot. You just kind of want to set that on there. Let, wrap it around. Let that chill for just, just one second. Then you want to take your feeder. This is your feeder line back to your unit. And you're going to... You're going to stick it in the other side and you're going to braze it in. It, it may need a little bit more uh, sanding. Once again, if you sat it down for just a minute, copper instantly starts corroding. So you always want a fresh sand on it. No matter if you sat it down five minutes ago or two seconds ago, always just be careful and hit it with the sandpaper. Better safe than sorry. Take that off, your filter dryer should be manageable to touch at least. Seeing as how that's just kind of sitting on there like that. You can bend it, set it on the concrete. Do whatever you want. Once again, relight your torch. That's what you want your oxygen to look like. And here comes the acetylene. Once again, you want to braze away from the filter dryer. Always keep your torch moving. Once again, it needs to be red hot for this silver solder to even even think about melting. But once it is red hot, it melts just as easy as you want it to. Once again, up the fire. Once again, you want to get it and you want to melt it around. Shit. Come back over here, make sure this side's good. 
Once again, hit your bottom. And drape. Drape with your towel. So, basically that's step one of a lot. So I will be back with more and we'll be putting this install in and we'll get it in as fast as we can. All right, so you see I'm working in the tightest space, freaking unmanageable. Um, I have, uh, let's see, what have I done? I have sanded down my copper. I have taken off the covers for the valves. You need to have a valve stem tool. You need to take these valve stems out. This is a bicycle valve, valve stem, whatever you want to call it. But you got to have this valve stem remover tool to do this. You want to take it out. That's what a valve stem looks like. Basic bicycle valve. You want to take both of these out because what will happen is even if you do put your, your cooling towel over it, it will melt. I don't I doubt you can see it, but there is a little piece of plastic going around the, basically the center of that valve stem. And what you'll do is you'll melt it with your torch. <laughs> you'll, you'll hook everything up, take your gauges off. It'll most definitely be leaking. So I've taken these out. I've taken all everything else out. Now I'm about to crimp these lines down onto because this is a uh, 16 inch. It's supposed to be 3 eighths, or it's supposed to be 3 eighths, but it's an eighth. My bad. Um, and this is 5 eighths going or 3 eighths going into a 5 inch hole. So I kind of have to crimp it on both sides. So with your handy dandy set of channel locks, you want to kind of grip it right here on the side. Make sure you're make sure everything's pushed in correctly and not in there all fucked up. And you want to just take it and crimp it to the side kind of like that. And move it back a little bit. Crimp it down. Same thing with your low side. Maybe you have to do a little bit of adjusting. You gotta open up your uh, you gotta open up your pliers a little bit, and you just kind of want to hold it to one side, and then just start crimping. All right, move them down, and finish the crimp. Okay. Now they're both in there. What's up, brother? Hey, I just need. I'm sorry, man. Oh, no, no. I just need to get into that room and he's mad. He's back over here. Well, I'm talking. He's popping the handle, man. I'm afraid he's going to come out, that bitch. You good? I appreciate it. Another quick tip, when you're not brazing anything, and I mean even leaving it for two seconds, you always, always, always want to cut your gas off. No matter how new your torches are, no matter how new your lines are, you're going to lose gas. You'll be midway through what you're doing and run out of gas, and that means you got to run to your local store and get supplies. So you want to take your rag again you want to kind of throw your rag over your over your valves you're not really worried about burning the valves up you just kind of want to not burn your unit up and you want to go back to brazing again once again everything needs to be red hot nice and sanded You just start mounting your, your braid on there.
Now where you did crepe it, you're gonna have to like braise a little bit more because of how you crimped it on there. And you wanna take it to the bottom side, make sure your bottom's good. And come over here to your big side. Watch out for starting fires because that POE oil is flammable. It may not be pretty, but it works. I'm gonna have to get another braised stick. It's really hard being bent over like, like this on the unit, but you do what you gotta do. Get your trusty dusty mirror here and see what you got. I'm gonna have to redo that. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. 